I'll just give it another minute here. Oh, Michael, while I have you here, actually, did Michelle give you the dongle for the owl back? I had realized that I had locked that up and then didn't even think that you probably needed that for work purposes. Yes, I have it. Thank you. I'm oh, sorry. Michael, about while that. I have you. There we go. Council member Frick. Mr. Wallace, how are you? Good. Right there. We we've got our we've got our team here. Uh, so it's Friday, May 6, 3:30 p.m. Um, having the meeting for the city of Hudson. Uh, apparently I can't spell tourism, S I M, instead of uh, the correct spelling on the agenda here. It's been a week. Uh, Thank you to everybody for doing this uh, within our 24 hour window. Alex is joining right now. Um, I appreciate it. The reason that we wanted to be able to try to get it done this week amongst everybody's insane schedules is that I want us to have at least a recommendation in place before we move into the informal, because there's two things that we need to discuss today. Obviously the tourism applications and making sure those organizations can receive funding as soon as possible, since we're coming on into the summer months and they're gonna need elements to do uh, elements for planning. And the second is we've got the uh, cement blocks, seasonal usage, shared streets, whatever you wanna call it, um, recommendations for 2022. And that is also going to be dependent upon DPW schedule, being able to get those out into the community as quickly as we can. Um, so with that, I'm actually going to flip our agenda uh, a little bit here today. Um, and I want to actually start out with the recommendations for the 2022 program for shared streets. Alex Petraglia is here with us today. Alex, I thank you very, very much for the time that I know you've put into speaking with a lot of the businesses in the community to help us reach a, a decision and a recommendation that works for everybody. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to you. What's the word on the street? What type of data and information can you share with us? Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it. So uh, is it possible for me to screen share? Please, yes. If you don't have permission, Michael, could you provision to, to Alex, if you would? You're all set. Thank you. Beautiful. So can you guys see that? Yep. Okay, great. So um, as for Ryan's introduction, uh, my name is Alex Petralia. I'm the president of the Hudson Business Coalition. Um, we're here to advocate for the return of a street, uh, Hudson City seasonal usage plan for the streets. Um, <clears throat> what we have outlined here is a program that I think would be most beneficial to Hudson's businesses, plus something that would be acceptable for purposes of uh, Hudson city government and the larger uh, residents and community of Hudson itself. So what we are proposing and what we have been um, floating essentially with Hudson's businesses is, is what's outlined here. So we would like to see the program run from Memorial Day weekend through at the beginning of November, um, taking advantage of those assets that the city already owns in terms of the concrete blocks and the planters, those will be returning. And this program would be available and open to any and all dining and drinking establishments that wish to participate. So no longer uh, retail businesses. Businesses like in previous years would have to supply their own tables, chairs, waste receptacles, et cetera. And per previous regulations, they can't build any permanent structures, tents, uh, Alex, and so forth. Alex, mm -hmm. sorry to cut you off. Can I ask one favor? Can you, yeah. go, can you make it 125 for me? Sure. Thanks. Is that better? Yeah, it's a lot better. Thank you. 
Okay, and I'm happy to share this doc with the with the um, members of the committee afterwards. Um, this program would, of course, um, likely require uh, DPW for the installation. Um, we would mandate with businesses that once the setup is installed, Memorial Day weekend, it stays put through November. Uh, once it's in, it's in for the season. Um, we're working hard right now if this program is acceptable to city government to secure a grant to cover the costs for uh, aesthetic and safety improvements to the blocks. Obviously, you know, we've all heard the complaints about the aesthetics of the blocks, but I think we've come up with a couple of solutions that would greatly improve it while also maintaining the rigorous safety standards that they um, provide. In ad addition to fixing up the planters, stocking them with new plants, um, and then hopefully some money to market the program as well to a larger audience so that people know that this program exists. We, in the last couple of weeks, have been tracking, you know, the city of Albany is now making outdoor dining a permanent um, fixture. Um, so ideally, you know, we would be attracting both locals and visitors to Hudson expressly for um, the purpose of eating outdoors with so many of our fine dining establishments uh, that we have here. We've talked about um, potentially asking businesses to pay a small fee based on a sliding scale, uh, how much they're able to contribute for the difference that we can't raise from the grant financing. Uh, as always, there'll be rigorous, again, regulation. So all businesses will need to um, manage the upkeep of their uh, spaces as well as um, sanitation, watering their plants, removing garbage, removing impediments around their, um, their uh, areas. Of course, we'll have similar to in previous years, um, you know, the regulation sheet that says they must adhere to all Department of Transport, city code, uh, police and fire um, requirements, DPW requirements, all regarding noise ordinances, sidewalk clearances, et cetera. And then once again, these uh, required documentation, this required documentation is similar to in years past, whereby businesses would need to um, sign an agreement document with all of the program re regulations and guidelines. Uh, they would have to file the permit with HPD if that's a requirement again, um, file their insurance certificate, naming the city of Hudson on their policy. And then for those who have um, liquor, uh, who serve alcohol would need to submit a copy of their SLA permit and legal liquor uh, liability insurance. Um, so again, we've been discussing this already with Hudson's businesses uh, who would be um, dining and uh, drinking establishments. So that would include all coffee shops, uh, takeaway restaurants, you know, um, restaurants that are open for lunch and dinner, breakfast, lunch and dinner, um, anybody who serves uh, food and drink in the city. So right now we have confirmed interest from a total of 15 participants. And that includes when I say confirmed um, actual emails back from them saying they would like to participate, obviously pending the details of the program uh, or in and addition, that's, actual, and that's actual been, signatures from that's them. That's vetted out just to be the drinking and dining as you outlined, not- This is just, yep, exactly. The program outlined is just for drink, drinking and dining businesses and these or just drinking dining businesses that um, are listed here. And then we have based on previous years participation, likely additional participants just going through our records and, and knowing the businesses that are um, present there. Um, so we estimate an additional 12 who we still need to follow up with or get confirmation with. So in total, that would mean about 27 to 30 participating uh, food and drink uh, uh, participants. Um, so one of the topics that we keep circling around is the um, lost parking revenue as a result of the spots being taken. Yeah. Um, we would humbly request that the city for, forego um, the parking revenue to help assist the businesses who are some, many of whom still recovering at this time. We also know that based on the success of the program in the past and how popular it was for um, both the businesses and those who came out to enjoy the program, um, that we can expect a nice lift in sales tax revenue back to the city. So in my mind, that would be uh, offset. All right. And that's uh, the rundown of what we're proposing for this year's seasonal use. And like I said, the Hudson Business Coalition is uh, eager to partner 
partner with the city on this. There's a lot of enthusiasm in the conversations that we've had with these businesses. Um, I would like to put it plainly that we have no intentions to close the street for traffic in any way. Um, this is merely to use the this is merely to use the parking spaces that would be um, directly in front of businesses or directly adjacent. Um, to them as as necessary again depending on fire um, fire hydrants and loading zones etc. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, can I get a second on that? Not closing the street, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, so I want to. Um, Art, you got your hand up. There we go. A loud second, exactly. Art, you got your hand up. Go ahead, sir. Um, Alex, in your initial survey of the businesses, was this presented to them as though the city would be covering the parking costs or? Was that like an unknown at the time? What I'm trying to understand, yeah, just what I'm trying to understand is, you know, we're we're saying that there might be 30 businesses interested, but if we say, you know what, you guys are going to have to cover the cost of the parking spaces, are we going to see five? Yeah. So, our, I've made it clear in speaking with all the businesses that this is a this whole program is a work in progress, right? And it's highly contingent upon the level of partnership that we can um, ultimately secure with the city, right? I've made clear to them as well that we're working hard to get a grant to cover as much of the uh, expenses as possible. If the city does not require the parking revenue, right? Then obviously that lowers the cost of the program for the businesses um, as a whole. So if that is a possibility, we essentially have to raise less money from, from the grants. And then that money would be used to just, again, make the aesthetic and safety improvements to the planters, uh, to the blocks themselves. Um, and, then, and then that would be the, uh, the focus. Got it. Dominic. Well, thank you. Sure. Thanks, Alex, just a couple of questions. Now, a um, couple of things like the planters, uh, if I remember last year, they, that didn't work out well for some of the shop owners. They didn't keep them up um, yeah. to, uh, and, uh, and my understanding that the planters also may not be in, in that great of a shape. Who's going to repair their planters? That's one question. I got a couple of questions. So let me sure. get my questions out. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sold on this longevity of six months. We're talking June to November, um, you know, to do this. Um, you know, that, that's a big chunk of, of time. And another thing is that I have a real issue with accessibility that, you know, these, you know, by putting these blocks there, there's no ramps for accessibility for your, the dining areas. Um, you know, for uh, ADA and everything on each of these. So uh, that's my real hang up, uh, you know, that, you know, we're providing this space. You're asking the government to for, for, forego uh, revenue, yet there's no accessibility on these, on these areas. Uh, additionally, I went down the street the other day and some of the sidewalks are um, impassable in some regards against code. And so I really have, I, I want to see one reassurance that there's going to be every, every area is going to have accessibility and that there's not going to be any code violations in terms of walking down the sidewalks, um, in terms of some of the stuff that's on the sidewalks, um, you know, and, um, you know, that I'm not sold on the longevity of this time frame. Um, so those are some of the thoughts and issues if you want to address any of those. Sure, Dominic. So thank you for the questions and I'll, I'll address them uh, as best I can. So I did have the opportunity to go down to Dock Street and take a look at the planters. Um, I know Rob Perry on a previous call discussed the state that they are in. Um, some of them are, let me put it this way, they are not as bad as you might think. Um, they could definitely use some repair work, um, including, uh, I, I didn't see many that needed total um, um, additional new wood to repair them. It mostly is just additional nails and screws to secure the wood that is in place on them, plus replacing some of the rope handles. Uh, and then obviously, you know, they're, they're currently filled with dead plants and it would be a matter of pulling out those plants and restocking them. Um, as part of the 
grant that we're seeking and the overall cost of the program. It would include the cost of uh, new plants. We're working with some local um, landscaping businesses to see if we can do an in-kind in part for that as well. Um, and then in addition to the work that they could put forward, we have you know, uh, members of the community, members of our board and business owners themselves who we already know would pitch in and spend uh, a, a day or so on a weekend to get everything in place and repaired and, and looking spiffy to be able to, um, to be able to utilize the planters themselves. Um, as for the length of the program, Dominic, this, was what we felt would be most beneficial to the businesses. Obviously, in a lot of ways, Memorial Day weekend kicks off the, the height of the season for, um, for Hudson's you know, um, peak season. Um, and knowing how much work goes into getting everything situated and set up and planning an initiative like this, it made the most sense for us to see the program run through November um, you know, with outdoor heaters and other elements. Um, it's possible for folks to enjoy the actual setup through November, I think, comfortably. Um, I'm not 100% sure if the concern is the loss of parking revenue that you had for the longevity of the program. But like I said, this is the, what, we're, what we're putting forth for Memorial Day weekend through early November. Um, you know, as for the as for the accessibility concerns, I hear you loud and clear. I think there's, you know, obviously work that needs to be done citywide to make the city of Hudson and its sidewalks more accessible. Um, we can certainly discuss with the individual businesses ways to optimize and make the areas more accessible for participants. Um, you know, all businesses, as far as keeping the sidewalks clear, again, as part of the agreement that they would sign off on for participating in the program, uh, they would have to make it clear that they'll, you know, stick to those, stick to the, um, the terms, and that includes keeping the side, the requisite, I can't remember offhand, it's, is it four feet or five feet that needs to be cleared on the sidewalks, but in any event, whatever the requirements is that they would have to adhere to that during the dur duration of the program. Vicky? Yes, uh, thank you for putting all this uh, together, um, Alex, I appreciate that. Um, so it's not the way I see it as a representative of uh, my ward. Uh, it's not losing, it doesn't have to do <clears throat> our hesitation for ex extending uh, the periods to November. Uh, in my point of view has a lot, it's because of different reasons. Um, one is the inconvenience to the public. It's not all about the businesses. And people need to park. There are people living there on Warren Street. Uh, there are handicapped people um, that they need parking. So there is, there is a lot of reasons why uh, the space is very crucial for some. Um, mm -hmm. The other reason is also, I, I think it has to do with the weather. Um, I know there was a snowstorm in the end of October and um, it, we're cutting it short and uh, it's, it's just very close to having bad weather and uh, it doesn't give us enough time to prepare for, you know, the change of the season. Um, but I also find it, um, so that's why, I mean, I'm in favor to go, uh, you know, uh, until Labor Day. But I also think the that uh, asking for paying for the plants, it's, it's a little bit uh, absurd to me because, um, you know, plants can cost, the, and then you're talking about planters, every, you know, establishment probably is three planters, it's a hundred dollars at least. I mean, so a store that uh, has a revenue of a hundred dollars, uh, you know, a table uh, probably per hour, they can very easily afford that. So. Um, you know, uh, I'd like us to help in any other way, of course, prepare them aesthetically and make them, uh, as you said, nail all the, the whatever is needed for the boxes. But after that, I think uh, the stores can do their own um, decorations. That's all. Okay. Thank you for that feedback. That's helpful. All right. I'll, I'll just jump in with my thoughts on this because I met with quite a few restaurant owners and, and beverage establishment owners. So there's, there's some core tenants uh, as somebody in the third in particular, 
um, that I've gotten feedback on. So the first is that the majority of my ward doesn't even sit off of Warren Street. So I want to make sure that the businesses that are within the third have an opportunity to participate in this. That's number one. I agree with Dominic on the accessibility elements. And I think that part of what we would look to do, I mean, I just took a search on Amazon. There are wheelchair sturdy enough curb ramps that can be placed against a curb so that there is an accessibility to be able to get up and down very easily. From a parking perspective though, this is where I disagree with the two spots and, and even the feedback that I got from some direct business owners, all they want is to be able to have one. The one business owner in particular that I met with, um, I'll, call, I'll call them third adjacent um, on Warren Street because they're on the other side in the first, um, has the opportunity to put small, uh, eight small two tops down. We measured it out where the uh, concrete blocks would be. And one spot in my mind is sufficient in that aspect. And the, and the real reason is to Alex, right? We are about, hopefully, uh, Mr. Mayor will help us get the uh, parking study issued. And while I am a big supporter of the outdoor dining, part of the things that we need to address with the parking study are exactly what the impact is when we're not even taking street um, parking away for the use of of outdoor dining. So we want to make sure that that study, as it's going to be conducted, which is an investment of almost $35,000, is done accurately. So I'm in the mindset of redacted down to one spot. I would go even further and say it's one spot for restaurants that currently do not have the capability of outdoor dining. So, and, and I, and not to pick on like back bar, for example, but they have an entire front uh, sitting area. They've got that whole back outdoor area. If that were an establishment who in this proposal wanted to take two additional spots up, I, I just don't know, again, knowing the parking situation in Hudson, if I can support that, you know, outside of my ward and whatnot. Um, the other elements come down to the payment pieces for me. So I think, uh, you know, not to speak for everyone else, but I'm of the mindset that yes, for two years, we shelved the, the cost of it. Businesses have done very well. I think that they can very easily, when you do the cost breakdown of the spots, afford to actually pay the full value of the spot uh, that they would be looking to use during that time. Um, and I'm also in agreement that we shorten the season a little bit because I will tell you it was a rush to get these off the street on October 30th, roughly, because we barely missed the first snowstorm of the season. So I would recommend kind of a wisdom of Solomon on that, not Labor Day, but maybe the end of September. Um, weather gets chillier, leaves start coming down, EPW needs to clean. Um, so that would be my feedback. Um, hey, uh, uh, Angelique, could you mind just uh, hitting mute? Because we're getting a lot of feedback on your end there. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Mayor Johnson. And it's, uh, you know, I'm in agreement with definitely shortening um, the season for this, um, given the last two years, um, clean up and planning with DPW as, you know, they're already overworked. Yep. Um, it's It's been a, a task even for setup as well. I guess my question is going to be one to pose to the council uh, when you guys are talking about this um, in your full meeting and amongst each other is um, one of the huge issues the past two years has been enforcement. If a restaurant is breaking the rules, if there's a complaint by the public, um, you know, whatever the issue is. And my office, we do not have the manpower to manage those complaints and any issues that arise. Yep. Totally. I, and the one I'll point out, uh, Mr. Mayor, is the noise complaint. I, mm -hmm. I, since we started having this discussion in February, late February with restaurants, that has come up time and time again, not just from residents, but from neighboring restaurateurs to those that, that were um, the causers, if you will, or whose patrons mm -hmm. were the causers of all of that. So I agree there does need, I mean, you know, Alex, I think to that end and to my fellow council members, what I would recommend is do we have like a three strikes clause, right? It's a money up front, it's a money up front game. Contract. Yeah. And it's got to be in the contract where if there's three violations of this, you know, 
unfortunately the blocks get removed and you lose the right to do it. Um, and that does put the pressure back on the businesses to rein the patrons in a little bit. Like, look, everybody wants to have a good time. Um, but, you know, I go back to the very first, the meeting that we had in February where a resident came in and, you know, said, look, it's beautiful. I love that people can dine outside, but when it's 10 o'clock at night and people are screaming and I can't even have my windows open and I live here, you know, what am I supposed to do? Because HPD can't enforce, mayor's office certainly isn't responsible for that, but they definitely are the um, beneficiary of all complaints, I can say, right? Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> so um, we, and look, right, third year, I think, I think what you've heard collectively here from this group is that we absolutely want to support it and see it come back. I think it's just, it's a pendulum swing, right? We went very far to one side in the beginning. We don't want to go all the way over to the other side, which is a no, but we want to try to recalibrate based on some of the other elements that we know that are happening within the city right now. Yeah, I, I hear that completely. And and I do understand wanting to modulate the program, which is why we've put forth this year that it would be just open to dining and drinking establish establishments, first of all. Um, to one of the other points, uh, Ryan, um, as part of the agreement, I guess this was last year's, I'm looking at it right now, there was a enforcement mechanism whereby any businesses that were found to be in violation of any of the clauses of the agreement would first get a written warning. The second time again, the program would be revoked to them. They would literally get their permits pulled by the um, police department. Um, so the, the, you know, those are in response to a couple of points. Um, again, I think we're, we are strongly in favor of two parking spots uh, just because with the amount of planning that goes into this and the amount of actual square footage that is gained given the planters and the blocks just by having one. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's not worth it, right? Because I don't want to be that absolute, but the, the surface area that you are essentially gaining the additional square footage that you're essentially gaining by having two spots as compared to one is significant. And for a lot of these businesses, um, having that additional seating space um, is hugely beneficial to them, quite frankly. Um, and under, you know, I do understand the length of the program, right? How long into the season it runs and the concerns that are there. Um, and again, like I said, we're, we're looking to have this be uh, a conversation with uh, the city, right? To, to figure out a program that everybody is satisfied with that has the requisite um, uh, mechanisms for enforcement um, and is both respectful of our residents, of course, um, and takes their needs into consideration while also doing something that not only helps the businesses of Hudson, but continues to position Hudson as the destination for folks to come and, and enjoy uh, all that we have to offer. Got it. Margaret? Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Uh, sorry, I'm joining a little late. Um, sorry about that. There was one question I had about the shared streets. So um, for a number of years pre-pandemic, there are quite a few restaurants in Hudson that have had uh, outside seating on the sidewalk, right, adjacent to their premises. Um, mm -hmm. Is there no possibility, and you may already have discussed this because I've just joined, is there no possibility that we could put that something in place where restaurants could simply have seating on the sidewalk adjacent to their restaurant and leave the uh, parking spaces out of the discussion? Is that Mr. something that could be considered or have you already discussed that? Mr. Mayor, I believe you know what some yeah, of that legislation is, right? Um, so there is, um, it's against code to have anything on the sidewalk. So um, a lot of those restaurants that did have seating on the sidewalk, they were um, spoken to by our code department um, as well as HPD. Um, there has to, by law, there has to be a certain length available on the sidewalk. And that's why it was proposed to move um, seating into the streets. So uh, Mayor, at the moment, and for as long as I've been in Hudson, there are a number of restaurants that have had and continue to have seating on the sidewalk. So are you saying that going forward, there will be no seating on the sidewalk? I'm saying there's not supposed to be 
anti-seeding. Right. The there there, is, and, there unless is. they're strategically put where there is um, the length, I forget exactly um, the length that it's supposed to be on the sidewalk that needs to be clear. 60 inches, I think, if I remember correctly. You, you, mean, you mean the width, not the length? Correct. Yes, yes correct. Yeah. So, so at the moment, Ligaman has always had seating. Uh, the roastery has seating. Uh, uh, the um, uh, Glory Place, uh, American Glory, has always had seating. Swoon has always had a little little bit of sweet seating. Um, uh, food Studio, before it moved to its current location, had seating. So can restaurants or can they not have seating on the sidewalk? I mean, I believe I just answered that three times. So they, so they can have seating on the sidewalk so long as they leave a certain uh, width available for pedestrians. Correct. So why can we not simply allow the restaurants to have seating on the sidewalk within current code? Because I think the amount of seating that's needed for this to be successful for the restaurants is more than we could provide on the sidewalk. Yeah, we need we need more than the ability to have two two tops, right? So in that example, yeah. you know, I'll pick on um, like let's pick on Legamine for a minute, right? Like if you look at the width of the front of that restaurant, yeah. you can fit two two tops, like one on each side, and that's really it, and that does provide just enough room for it. And I, I, I think it's 60. I don't know. I need to go back and look at the code, but it's effectively enough room where a wheelchair and a person could get past without any, any issue. That's always whatever the width of a standard wheelchair and a human being to walk alongside of it. That has always sort of been the, the guardrail of, of what they can do. So that's why she is able to do the two there. So to the mayor's point, if, if we're trying to create a program where they're going to be able to accommodate the influx of summer visitors, right? Like we need to be able to provide a little bit more seating than that. Um, I know some folks have, uh, um, are probably thinking like, based on that statement to my former suggestion of one spot, that there's not enough room to be able to get uh, things into the one spot. I've actually measured out though, you could easily get four, four tops into one parking spot, inclusive of the concrete barriers and some restaurants you'll recall last year actually put pillows down on them and use the one side of the barrier as a seat for the table so you know i think this is while while luxury dining is one thing i think for the betterment of all i still go back to the one spot because restaurants are going to have to get creative i mean we're we're giving a little they have to give a little back as well yeah i don't think one spot will work but i mean i would I would love to, to see it kind of mapped out, but just going, being a part of this for the past two years, um, you know, restaurants are really trying to replicate their indoor dining experience outdoors. Um, and, you know, that won't necessarily work on the sidewalk and, you know, it's not going to work in one spot either, but, um, you know, I'm, I am probably the least creative person on this call. So. We'll get, <laughs> um, we'll get you designed. That's not true. <laughs> I'd be interested to, to see. The, the other, um, the only other thing I consider too, having spoken with a lot of the restaurant owners is I think everybody understands the volume of help wanted signs, particularly in restaurants that are out. I'm praying that they might be able to fill them with students that are going to have some time on their hands this summer and want some jobs. But it begs the question, you've got, now you've increased a footprint, you don't have enough people to actually staff the restaurant. So does that mean we're going to be looking at dirty dishes piling up because somebody's running around ragged within the restaurant themselves, trying to bust other tables and it's, you know, something else that just passersby and others will need to deal with as they focus on other tables at that moment. So I just put that out there because it is a fact of of the current economic environment in that aspect. And also, um, you know, I think there was a, we had a, an attendee to the last meeting who asked the question about staffing within restaurants. Art, Art, your hands up, you might be on mute. Yeah, can you, can you guys hear me? Sorry, I'm, I'm in Virginia yes. at the moment. Yep. Um, but I, I, I think that where, where I, I get back to it is that I, I'm a, I'm inclined to agree with Mayor Johnson in that I really think that we need 
to have two spots for you know the this thing to really be effective like i i, I think that you know lost your art oh hold on he just reconnected i think sorry we just lost you sorry Actually, can you guys hear yep we've got you now okay sorry um where did i get to so anyway long story short is i agree with mayor johnson that i think we need to offer two spots i think I think restaurants should be given an option if they want one spot or two spots. I think the restaurants should pay for the cost of the spots, no questions. Um, and concerning Dominic's concern about the ramp, I think that uh, you know if we're you know looking for grants to give them flower boxes and things like that, I, I think maybe a, a ramp should be included in that kit. Um, and I also really like the idea of the the three strikes you're out kind of thing concerning noise complaints, those, those kinds of issues. But yeah. I, I, I think that there's a, and I, I'm also in favor of sort of reducing the scope. I, I think that, you know, I, I, I was somebody that was definitely sitting outside in October and I didn't find it particularly enjoyable. And I don't think a lot of the other patrons did, um, but you it's know- Because you didn't have a heat lamp. I, I, that's, that's my own opinion. All right, so I think I think we're coalescing around something here to be able to bring to the council, right? I think we're all in agreement that yes, bring it back. I think we're in agreement that yes, pass along the costs. Uh, hold on, before I keep going on, Tom, do you want to say something? Yes, um, you're talking about bringing it to the council, and while I appreciate this um, open discussion about it, what what exactly does the council have authority in this? I don't believe we do. So how was it decided last year to move forward with the program then? Well, that's because we were funding it. Ah, all right. Well, we're not funding this in any way, correct? We don't have budget set aside to fund it, no. Right. Exactly. So really, the only issue that would come before the council would be if we had some funding question. The only authority in this matter really is in City Hall and the mayor's office to allow those spaces to be used. And of course, I have to say also, I'm very concerned with what the mayor said about enforcement. I mean, Alex is, you know, he pointed to the agreement last year. Well, we had a person in place, whether he did a good job or not, I don't really know. But there was somebody there who was supposed to be in charge of enforcing that agreement. Does the business coalition, are they willing to take that responsibility on? They haven't really made that clear. Anyway, once again, I'm not sure what the council has to do with it ultimately, though I do appreciate what this conversation has brought up as the issues. That's it. Great. Alex, do you wanna tackle his question there on enforcement? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know that the business coalition has the authority as far as um, the enforcement mechanism, if that, like it would in previous years um, reside with, uh, I guess it was the police department that was responsible for collecting the permits for the businesses that participated? No, we actually hired a manager, if you recall. Okay. Gary, Gary Pernhagen for the uh, oh. former year, I believe. And, and this individual was authorized to, within some level of enforcement mechanism, to be able to I guess, issue warnings and then ultimately pull any well, um, permits for those that were found to be in violation? Yes, to, to monitor it and then to work with HPD or whoever, a code or whoever would be relevant. Okay. Yeah, they would, they would be working directly with HPD. So they actually wouldn't be approaching the businesses about um, a violation, but they would be the one who would take the report they would take the calls. Um, they would be the contact person, the li liaison, basically, between um, the program, the community, the city, and businesses. And I think that, you know, going back to enforcement, that if the business is fronting up and responsible for the parking fee, um, that gives them an incentive for enforcement because they're going to lose out on that money. If, the, you know, right now, what's the incentive? They're not going to lose out on that money that they reserved for parking. So if the mm -hmm. business says, wait, I'm going to, I'm putting money here. Um, the enforcement is going to be a little bit more uh, stricter. Uh, and because 
is this is my money I'm going to lose. So, you know, there's got to be some things on, on, you know, for consequence and enforcement on the business owners. Sure. Yeah, I think these. these, anyway, these are yeah, to give you a little bit of perspective, Alex, like I'm, I'm, I'm all for whatever iteration this comes like I'm not against it. But, you know, I was getting messages and emails and calls that, you know, one, two in the morning with complaints. And, um, and then, you know, there was the traffic, the, the issues around traffic as well. Sure. So maybe if everybody's amenable to the idea, we find some time offline and really work out the enforcement details and mechanisms so that, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's um, something that we would, we would all agree to. That sounds good. I like that. Mr. Mary, I know you're slammed in the, in the coming week, but um, Michael Hoffman, maybe we can all find time just to huddle together on that part of it. Um, and then let us know how we can support them too. So if it's not, and again, we don't have the budget for it. Um, our yeah. opinion at least have been voiced on what this looks like. So. Yeah, I think um, what the council can do, and they, you guys can come with a recommendation on, you know, how this rolls out should look. Yeah, yeah. that that'll help us out a great deal. Alex, do you want to? Um, can you send this to us separate? Actually, download it as a Word doc and send it, and then I'll version control share it to people just so that we everybody can get their stuff in versus opening it up at mass, which could probably end up deleting stuff. Um, I don't know if you can lock it, Alex, too, for its comment only. Um, yeah. Because this way, I don't I don't want to take away of any of the original details that were in this so that when anybody else gets it, like everyone's going to be able to see what the original proposal was, at least. Okay, certainly. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your consideration Listen, for your for your feedback today. Listen, I I know how much work you put into this. I, I we're not here to poo poo it. We just want to find a way to make it work based on everything we know from previous years. So thank you very much for your time and for coming to help us sure. work through it today. Sure. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. All right. Round two. Um, and Mr. Mayor, thanks for coming today for that portion of it as well. Um, yeah, I'll be here. Okay. Thanks, yeah, no problem. All right. So round two, um, everybody should have the second batch of the 2022 tourism applications uh, found online. And the other thing that I had put together was the all-inclusive all-in-one spreadsheet, which just makes it a little bit easier for everybody to read and access. Um, we have a total of $14,650 to dole out today against a requested amount of $65,087, providing us a delta of $50,437 that we are not able to meet. So um, I want to open it up to members of the Tourism and Events Committee first to make any comments on where, where do you want to start? basically, um, rather than go application by application, um, are there any yeses and nos depending on what has stood out for whom? And of course, I will throw my fun question out there for the mayor again of, can we just get more money and make this happen? <laughs> um, I can... We gotta do a bake sale. I, I bake sale, I'm gonna be selling organs and, and whatnot shortly to help this one out. Go ahead, Vicki. Yes. Um... I mean, I want to thank everybody for applying and um, some of them look incredibly good. Um, I do want to say though, uh, a no to the Hudson Festival Orchestra, which I do think it can be great, but asking for 47,000, over 47,000, and we have a budget of 14 now. Uh, I don't even think we can offer anything that without offending the people, so I just, yeah. So right off the bat, I want to say, unfortunately, we can't do that. Um, I think Ryan, was Ryan, there... maybe we just start with kind of the traditional ones, you know, the established ones and go from there, um, you know, and see and then roll, roll, roll it off, you know, you know how that rolls off. 
that works. Can, can uh, we can can okay. we just pull up your spreadsheet, Ryan? That that really I think encapsulated yeah. everything pretty well. Yes. Give me one second. Hold on. If you only knew how many tabs are sadly open on my computer today. Oh, it, it's a tab life, my friend. Oh, if any, uh, yeah. If anybody wants to come and party late, I'll be I'll be here for all hours today. All right. Is this the one? Yes. Um, all right. Bear with me. Just going to share my screen here. All right. Can everybody see? It? Is that a yes? No. Do you want me to make it bigger? I just saw Vicky lean in. Hold on. I can I can do that. No. Um. Let me see if I can. Uh, all right, so there's previous funding on the side. There you go. Is that better for everybody? Can I get a yes? Yes, and the lower part? Where's the, the, lower, the lower part is just, I recapped oh. exactly who we okay. previously funded. So in working through Dominic's suggestion, um, like, and, and looking at what we did previously with these folks and the previously established, I'd like to commit 5K at least to Sankofa for Mrs. Mosley. It's the longest standing festival that we've got in the county, like hands down. She does an incredible job. And even outside of the festival, she's at Waterfront Wednesday working with every other team, organization, and cultural entity. I wish I had the full ability to be able to fund everything this year with it. But knowing that we've got to spread it around, I want to make sure like we did previously, um, like these folks like Flag Day, um, out um, Winter Walk, right? I want to make sure that that's treated equally. So I would recommend that 5K go right into Mrs. Mosley. I agree with you. That's, yeah. That's I do also too. Also agree. Y'all took the budget down really quick there. Don't agree with me that quick. Okay. So, sheesh. So what does that leave us with now? So 9,650 then. I, I believe, didn't I remember us sort of penciling uh, Vash and Latin X at 2,500 each? And then... That's, yeah, no, that sounds about right. I mean, with, with Bash, here's, I, I definitely want to see the Bangladeshi Cultural Fair get money because they did not get any last year. And I don't, I don't, I think it's because A, they didn't realize that they could apply for it. But if we're looking at supporting our community events and organizations, like they absolutely should get some funding here. And this even goes for the Latinx piece. My only thinking and my only criticism of, Last year, it's not the event. The event was fantastic. I had a great time. Um, it's that when we looked back retrospectively on how some of the monies were spent and last year, they received 15,000 in funding. Um, I'm aware that based on the follow-up reports that some of the money went directly into supporting the um, staff fees and there were hourly rates for um, organizing this. And when I look at other of the community event organizations like the flag day, like these organizations aren't paying themselves to organize the community event. The money is going directly into the event itself, whether that's for entertainment purposes or bands or um, fireworks as in uh, years past. So, you know, that's where I wonder, you know, instead of going five, do we go 2,500 this year for a Latinx so we can also make a 25K for Bash. Uh, Ryan? Yes. So the way I see it is that we gave more Latinx last year because it was their first year, but uh, the Begali, I think, had more years behind them. And we had, I think we had fund them, we uh, partially at least in the past. Uh, so community is just almost the same. But um, I just, because I, I don't think we should have one versus the other a little bit more. I think there should be both 3,000 each, you know, actually. That way we don't. Okay. So for each, hold on, I'm going to, I'm playing with my calculator here. All right, so then that would be six. That leaves us with, $3,650 if we went that route. It should be the same. I, I mean, the ones that 
The ones that don't stand out to me, the ones that don't stand out to me, hold on, Art, one second. Art, sorry, one second. The, the ones that don't stand out to me this year, um, like Dalmatian Day, like Fasny getting that back off the ground, like it's it's an awesome event. It's, it does attract people in the course of the day, but FASNI is a, a decently funded organization and there's a lot of money to be pulled even from the state level into something like that. So that's where my head's at. Also, I'm sure we can figure out another path forward um, with them. I mean, I don't know if that's something we can work with the fire department and um, Commissioner Hutchings and, and the team on to say if there's something that we can do that would help to raise money there. But I think that there's other avenues forward, kind of like what we said with Arbor Day um, and the CAC. I agree with you, Ryan. And I also think maybe uh, also the youth department with the, uh, you know, the Dalmatian, they can, we can do something for kids to understand because somewhere I read a lot of the fires are uh, many times kids are, um, you know, kind of behind it or responsible. So it's good for them to learn. Yep. There are yep. a lot of ways to make this happen, I feel, outside the tourism board. You know. Agreed. And then the other one, I mean, Gwen Gould's um, proposal is beautiful. Um, and I know that uh, she's doing a lot in terms of getting it here. Um, personally, I mean, and, and look, I mean, you look up everybody, you find out if they're very well connected or not. I, I don't think that it would be much to raise as a standalone. The other thing is separately, this is highlighting a lot of musicians throughout the county. If it were musicians from within the city, that would be one thing. So if this is like an all, does anybody remember all county, right? Like where you were good enough at your high school and you went up to the county level and you played in one uh, band. It was usually held at Chatham, if anybody is not from here, but um, you know, that's the type of thing where if we're gonna be hosting a concert here in Hudson that is highlighting people from across the county, I would go and knock on the, the the other town chambers of commerce's door and say, people from your municipality are partaking in this. Can you chip in $500, $1,000 to help highlight and advertise? It shouldn't just all be shelved by the city of Hudson. So it's one for me that I think um, needs a different approach than that would come out of our coffers. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, you know, and the one I really want to see, honestly, is the second Saturday's park theater one, because I feel like, well, actually, wait, before I get there, the other thing, cause I think I just got this in my inbox in terms of like orchestral things, the Albany symphony orchestra will be at Basilica coming up in a few weeks. Right. So it's not like it's something like symphony music at the waterfront is already being done and it's not costing the citizens of Hudson anything through taxpayer dollars. Um, but the ability to get a different musical scene started, which let's face it, since Helsinki closed has been tough. Um, we kind of are seeing a bit of the rebirth of that in the park theater. And while I know we can't afford $9,250, I would like to see something go to Shannon McGee here. Because I think that hundred percent. I mean, did you go last year? Art? it was a ton of fun. Several times. Several times. Yeah. Like, it's for locals. It's for tourists. It's on second Saturday, which is helping the galleries and the restaurants who, through other funding initiatives, are already staying open late. Like, this guy is actually working within the confines of what last year's board that carries into this year have already put forward it kind of helps our existing money that we put down already work harder for itself. And he just I mean, needs a little bit more direct funding. And I think it, you know, it checks a lot of boxes, right? I mean, you know, uh, you know, locally, you know, and also, you know, trying to get some seed money to make this bigger and better in the coming years. So, um, you know, I think that it does, um, you know, again, we're spo you're talking about somebody's a local person. putting uh, their messages here. I think Ryan, you may need to close the screen. Okay, good. Okay, so I mean, I, I agree with you guys. I, I think that it, it checks a lot of boxes. Uh, I know I don't think he got anything last year, and, and those shows were um, uh, very well attended. Um, and 
and you know, again, you know, we're talking about some very good musicians, uh, local musicians, uh, on on that hand too. My only note: work with Rivertown Lodge to not close down the street. That's, I think, I don't know if anybody is. I'm on some emails back and forth between the chief right now. I don't know how we're going to work on the street thing, but yeah, I had spoken to the chief about uh, you know closing streets is not as easy as we might think. He explained to me about the winter walk, what the big ordeal it is. So uh, he they have to hire more police in order to do this right, count the police and stuff. So I mean, it, it would be great. I definitely would like to see it happen, but close the street but yep. and and i just want to throw in that that is a truck route um oh yeah <laughs> so we don't really have the authority to close the street oh okay that's i, and I, I would that's their debate back and forth too because his his argument that i've heard multiple times is but we do it for we do it for the memorial day parade we do it for the flag day parade we do it for the latinx parade I mean, I, and I don't know how to defend that. I think winter walk too, right? And winter, well, uh, I, I think it'd be defended because those are parades and not a, a permanent sort of blockage. Yeah. Well, the other, the other thing to think though, too, right. It's the, the others are a civic engagement activity, not a private businesses standalone event. Well, well that too, but it really does have to do with whether they can access those that street during a parade and they can. Right. But that's, I think, I think we figure out the, I, I let's not get caught up in the parking, stopping the funding. Right. It's the idea that we'll figure out something that can work that to mayor Johnson's point, like if we don't close down the truck route, fine. There is a possibility of shutting down park, uh, sorry, park Warren between park and, seventh though because that is not part of the truck route on that small side so i think we just need to figure out what what's a happy medium that doesn't hurt everybody and doesn't tick a lot of people off um well and and i i think also though you know shannon's done this for what what is this year two he's done this two years in a row without shutting down the street so you know I think that I, I have no qualms about giving him some funding to, you know, make this even more better for the town. So where does that leave us? We're at, hold on. I got to recap again. I'm sorry, I got to do math here. So 3000 Bangladesh. 3,000 Latin X, 5,000 Sankofa. That leaves me at 3,650. For the park theater. So it's exactly the could, calculation she did. It's, it could, just, could we, I, I would love us to figure out a way that we could get the Stiff Circus crew some cash. I think they do a lot of really great events that are very youth focused and specifically like city youth focused events in Hudson. And I, I think that, you know, we should support them. That's my, my thinking. Uh, did we ever have them before? I don't remember. No. Hey. Hold on. Yes, last year they got 15. Last year. No, they got, they got, they did get, no, because what I, did they get 15, Dominic? Because I went through and I saw that they had been a consideration, but did they get funded? Yes. They did. Okay. So they've already been, I mean, to that end then, they've already, yeah, they've already gotten funding in the past. Oh, sorry. We're hearing a lot of feedback. Um, I, I think that personally, I, I would put them down for a thousand and probably reduce Latinx and Bash by 500 each. Well, if you reduce it by 500 each, it won't make the 3,000. What do you mean? That's what he's suggesting is take 500 from each of them. 
if you take 500 from Bangladeshi and 500 from Latinx, that's the thousand that can go to bindle stiff. So then you would have 2,500 Bangladesh, 1,000 bindle stiff, 2,500 Latinx. Would 1,000 help them at all? I mean, they are asking 7,500, right? Uh, it depends. It depends on their other funding. You know. It, I'm just you know, wondering if it's going to make a difference. That's the thing. You know, a thousand is I, so low. I, I think that I think that more than I, I think that any dollar makes a difference. I, I think that um, all of these organizations, um, you know, city money is is but a small part of their overall revenue stream, or you know, it, all, overall intake of cash. Like and I, I think that as a as a council, right, we're we're making our best effort in terms of of really more civic endorsement. So I, I, I think that, you know, I, I don't know that the amount is like so hugely impactful as it is the visibility. That that's that's my only comment in terms of you know a thousand, two thousand, you know. Help. What do we want to do? Public. <laughs> Mayor Johnson, can I have a thousand extra dollars, please? No. <laughs> Actually, Tom, that's a good question. Like, can we go back and ask for a thousand dollars more? I haven't asked you that question. I don't know how that works. Ryan, to remind you, you guys are in charge of the money. I'm just the final say. <laughs> so you gotta ask. I'm, 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 this is me. This is me priming you. I'm, I'm looking to see if there's like a special mayor's pot that I don't know about. Like, um, if, if there is, it's empty. <laughs> right. Well, Ryan, I think that you know, unfortunately, we have to operate within the budget because where do we draw the line if we go back for a thousand? And you know, so yeah, that's I, 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 I do like you know arts thinking right you know that it, if it could help and you know maybe you know we can help in other ways to bend those sticks whether getting the word out or if they are having some fundraisers you know getting that word out supporting them in terms of whatever they you know they need secondarily to raise their money i am a fan of right. bindle sticks so you know and i don't know if they're tied into Friends of Hudson, if they're already given money, but maybe Friends of Hudson could, you know, uh, be a part of this conversation, you know, so, um, but I do think that, you know, recognizing, you know, their effort and what they do in our community, um, you know, is, is something here. All right, hold on. I'm trying to, I found the spreadsheet, spreadsheet, not the PDF, and I'm just trying to like update so I don't lose where we are. All right, you all mind if I share my screen again, just to make sure I got this right then? All right. Um, so does this look right then? 25 Bangladeshi. Where thousand, is, can you go thousand, lower? Thousand Bindle Stiff. 2,500 Latinx. 5,000 to Mrs. Mosley. 3650 to park and that zeroes us out. Okay. Dominic. Yes. It works. Works good. Art. I'm I'm as happy as I'm going to be in this limited funding atmosphere we find ourselves. Well, once I give you a kidney and a lung, we'll have that to, <laughs> to do all this. I'll bring, hey, hey, on the first shuttle right down to Queens, my friend. Yeah, right. All right. That looks good. An hour and three minutes. All right. Um, Linda's just like, yes. I've got one more thing just to let everybody know as well, which is um, – we are officially closed out on the audit and all items out of the 2021 Project Hudson elements. Um, the last one came in from Free Columbia, which actually returned, uh, they're, they're keeping the equipment that they, they got the grant to do um, their events with last year. So they turned around, they're cutting us a check or cut us a check actually, I believe Tracy, Tracy received it, it was adorable. It was made out to me and then the county clerk 
And I told her, do not take that up the holly. So um, I believe that's now with Heather um, and it'll be put back into uh, the tourism fund. So actually, I don't know if we can speak for that right now, but I believe the check is for roughly 500. Tom, are we able to, is Tom still on? No, I think Tom left. Um, let me ask you all this right now, right? If we've got that money left over. How much is it, you said? $500. I, I think we should I, hold on. To, 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 I, I think we should, if it comes back, oh, I think actually, we should hold on to. Dominic, you know why? The, the uh, Halloween. The Halloween parade. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll hold yeah. that. Perfect. Outstanding work, Council Member Wallace. Very good. <laughs> this is never fun because it's just, you know, I, I hate it. Everyone's got a good idea. It would be awesome if we could do all of this. Um, Alex, write some grants for us, man. Come on. Like. <laughs> all right. Are you going to do thumbs up there? You, there we go. All right, everybody. Gonna, wait, uh, Ryan, are you just going to offer? I don't know, public comment just just in case or oh yeah yeah um carol or angelique um uh, anything all right nope. have everyone. a good day everyone uh, listen thank you for doing this friday last minute and You'll see in the next the next two weeks, it's going to be just insane with work and everything else. So thank you, everybody, for making this happen so we can move it along.